Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where I'm here as always with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you, my friends? Well, we're going to kick things off with a brief visit to Intelville. And what we have here is some leaks regarding the ninth generation, because apparently the ninth generation is a bit like Swiss cheese, really, with the amount of leaks that we've had lately. And what we actually have here is some rumours regarding the price tag. Now, of course, we've heard a few rumours and speculations and leaks and so on and so forth with the how much this is actually going to cost. Basically what we have is a collection of rumours as it were. Now Intel have yet to officially confirm the final retail processing for process, pricing, excuse me, for these processors, but according to various rumours, leaks, listings and so on, we're going to be seeing a price tag of roughly 595 euros to 609 euros for the 9900k, 459 euros maximum, again, if these, uh, sorry, 475 euros maximum if these listings are correct, and then we're going to be seeing 315 euros max for the 9600k. And one particular listing shows the 9900k at over $600 Canadian, which is uh, kind of insane, to be quite frank with you. But that isn't the only leak we have had for the ninth generation today, as we have Newegg leaking the Z390 motherboard and we have a huge amount of motherboards here. So we are seeing pricing pretty much in line with the Z370. So we have here a bunch of them. I'm not going to read them all out because I'll be here till Christmas, but the most expensive one is the Z390 Godlike from MSI, which apparently is going to cost 857 US dollars. And uh, you might go, excuse me, did you misspeak? Did you perhaps mean to say, I don't know, 457? No, 857. And apparently this is because it features things like an onboard PLX chip, M.2 expansion module, and a streaming capture card in there as well. So not exactly meant for your average user to say the least, but it obviously ranges from 260 to the top end of $418, but mainly hovering around the sort of $300-ish mark. Now, of course, we've already seen the rather insane packaging for the i9-9900K, at least. The other ones do have more normal boxes. But the main thing here is the rumoured pricing. So if these are correct, they do pretty much line up with the leaks we've had previously, and we'll put the 9900K at quite the expensive investment to say the least. So what do we have as our next topic for today? Well, we actually have something from the one and only TSMC. And what we have here is that they are going to begin risk production of a 5NM node with full EUV in April and basically they have taped out its first chip. Now they're basically saying that this will use EUV on up to 14 layers and again is going to be coming out or the production is going to be starting in April should I say and EUV is aiming to lower cost by reducing the number of masks required for their designs. However TSMC did say that the N5 that being the 5NM of course that's pretty much what it's called in this internal document, will deliver 14.7% to 17.7% speed gains and 1.8 to 1.86 area shrinks based on tests that they have conducted with ARM A72 cores. But long story short, they are going to be beginning 5NM production in April is basically what all that comes down to, which again is why Intel are in such trouble with the heavy delays to 10NM, because we're not expecting to see that until 2019. Now, of course, this is beginning risk production in April, and that's obviously next year, so and I'm not saying this out tomorrow or anything like that, but they are working on it, and 5NM may be out around the same time as 10NM, and even if it comes out after they're still ahead, is basically my point. And for example, Samsung are also working on a 7nm node using EUV, and Global Foundries were working on 7nm with EUV, but have actually halted that work as they announced back in August. So basically, TSMC are just planning on trucking along. They're continuing to improve on their technologies and... Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting one, especially as, of course, we've had reports that AMD are going to be leaning on them for the production of Zen 2. So, of course, we're going to have to wait and see what the future does hold, but I'm sure Intel are painfully, painfully aware that TSMC are pretty much tearing ahead of them. So, what do I have next for you? Well, we have an interesting report, or counter to a report, from Supermicro. 
Now, you may have seen a rather interesting and rather concerning report on Bloomberg that Supermicro sold servers that contained malicious microchips in the motherboards itself. And basically, we have a ref refutation of that from Supermicro. Of course, the other companies who have responded have refuted the claims as well. But basically, the... Uh, Allegations are that Super Micro motherboards sold to certain customers contained malicious microchips on the motherboards themselves back in 2015. Super Micro have basically said that they have never found any malicious chips and have never been informed of any customers finding anything like that in any of their servers. Now, as I said, we also have had statements from both Apple and Amazon. As far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any response from Elemental as of yet, but I would fully expect them to refute the claims as well. But I do have a statement here from Apple who said to CNBC, quote, We are deeply disappointed that in their dealings with us, Bloomberg's reporters have not been open to the possibility that they or their sources might be wrong or misinformed. Our best guess is they are confused in their story. They previously reported 2016 incident in which we discovered an infected driver on a single Supermicro server in one of our labs. At one time, event was determined to be accidental and not a targeted attack against Apple. Whereas Intel, uh, not Intel, sorry, Amazon said, quote, as we shared with Bloomberg Business Week multiple times over the last couple of months, at no time past or present have we ever found any issues relating to modified hardware or malicious chips in Supermicro motherboards in any Elemental or Amazon systems. So basically they're they're backing up Supermicro here saying, you know, we, we've never had any issues essentially. And Supermicro have understandably denied the claims as well. But, you know, we have probably not heard the last of this. Of course, the accusations that Bloomberg are making here are fairly serious. So I'd fully expect there to be repercussions, even if it's just, you know, legal mud being flown, flung around or something like that. So we're going to finish things up with a brief visit to Qualcomm. So basically what we have here is the Snapdragon 8150, which is expected to be found in the S10 and of course a few other flagship devices as well. But we have had a leak of this with a certification of the SoC at Bluetooth SIG. We have learned various things about the next gen silicon. So what do we have here is, well, Apparently it's going to be supporting a Wi-Fi 802.11 and we're going to be supporting for Bluetooth 5.0 Low Energy LE as well. And we're also going to be seeing a lot less power consumption with this chip as well, which is fairly important, especially when it comes to a mobile device for obvious reasons. Apparently it consumes almost 67% less power and also supports the WPA3 protocol again with the Bluetooth 5.1. Unfortunately, this is all we know about the processor itself. You know, I don't have like, oh my god, it has this many threads or whatever. You know, here's how much how much more powerful it is, that sort of stuff, which I'm sure is what you really want to know. But unfortunately, the information here is a little thin on the ground. We do just know that, yep, it's a thing that exists, the Snapdragon 8150. And here's the improvements that are registered on Bluetooth SIG. What we do know previously is it is going to be a 7nm FinFET process managed by... you manufactured, should I say, by TSMC. And we also might see the devices paired with this supporting 5G, but of course that's something that is going to be outside of the remit of the Snapdragon 815. Now, we did have some previous benches for this particular processor, and it's looking rather interesting to say the least, which is definitely good considering, again, we are expecting to see this in the S10, as well as at various other flagships as well. So of course, I would say that we are going to learn much, much more information than this um, as we approach the actual launch of this particular chipset. I'd hope we learn all the ins and outs and nitty gritty details that I do love to get my teeth stuck into. But for now, that is all we know. As always, though, guys, thank you so much for watching. Your support does make a huge difference to both myself and Paul. So thank you again for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe as it does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time.